Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today in this episode, I'll be demonstrating how to configure the Shield platform encryption uh, in your org. In the last episode, I talked about what Shield encryption is all about, uh, the definition of keys, uh, tenant secret, uh, master keys, right? Um, so today will be more hands-on session. Uh, but that being said, I will also talk about the best practices around Shield Platform encryption. So you get to know when to use Shield Platform encryption and when not to use it, right? Because it's very important to understand that part of the concept as well. Okay, let's dive in. So I've logged into my org. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. So you go to the setup. So what we're going to do first, right? We're going to create a uh, permission set. So the reason why you need to create a permission set because we need to enable two settings. Uh, that's the managed encryption key and uh, customized application, right? So for that, we need to create a permission set and assign the user, right? That's the best way to do so rather than, you know, doing at a profile level. So, so what we do, so we're going to do permission sets. Um, and, uh, so you're going to do new, um, so I'm going to say, uh, shield perm, right? So this, um, uh, this, a, this is a perm, uh, shield for shield platform. It's always good to put the description. Uh, that's the best practice, in my opinion, because if you don't do that, um, then uh, you know you might, you know, confuse other uh, consultants who wanted to look at it at the later stage, right? Maybe six months down the line. So it's always good to have a description for any custom object for anything you do, for that matter. So I'm just going to choose the Salesforce, the license. And I'll save it. All right. Okay. So what I will do here, uh, I will go to the system permission here, and I'll go for edit. Um, and I'll look for uh, two options here. One is the manage um, key. All right. Seems like I can't find it. So summary key. Ah, uh, manage encryption key. So I will click that. And apparently there's only one key option here. And say uh, the another one, customize. And this they use American spelling, so it just makes it difficult to um, find the stuff here. Customize applications, right? This is the one, the two things, okay? Um, so I'll close this, go up and save, okay? So that's done. Now, okay, save this as well. Now, what we have to do, we have to go and generate a tenant secret, okay, uh, which is important. Uh, now, you need to keep the tenant se secret safe somewhere. So the best way to do, uh, to how to generate a tenant secret, right? That's the first thing. So for that, you go to setup, right, the same page where we are right now. Um, and under setup type um, platform, oh, come on. Uh, platform encryption and you go to key management yeah and yeah that's great um okay so now this is a mistake uh, you might do it so you know what happens is that I've created a permission set but I haven't assigned the user right so that's the most thing right I have to sign myself so we gotta go back to uh, permission says this is cool. I mean this actually teach you, you know, troubleshooting step as well um, So I go to shield uh, And trust me, you know people tend to do this mistake. I've done that many times and you can see I've done just now as well so uh, go to manage assignments um, So I'm just gonna add myself And I'm just gonna add this assign Okay done now, I'm just going to refresh it, refresh my page. Uh, and then I'll go to uh, platform, encryption, and key management. It's, it's going to take its time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, so 
now we're good to go. So you need to worry about the, the generate tenant secret. Um, so you don't have to worry about bringing your own key for now. So click on generate tenant secret. And um, so, you know, you need to choose the tenant type data. It's everything is good. Now you can, um, as you can see, you know, this option is disabled now. Uh, you can just export the key to keep it safe, right? So that's pretty straightforward options. Nothing fancy here. Okay, now, so that's, I mean, this this comes as a part of a key hygiene, right? I mean, so the export option because you need to keep it, you know, safer somewhere because if you lose it, uh, if it got corrupted, you probably need to import it back to use it. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do, uh, now we have done two things, right? First, we created the permission set, assigned the user, and we have configured the tenant secret. Right now, we need to encrypt the fields, files, and attachment, whatever you wanted to do. Right, so you know you can encrypt your files and attachment if that's what your business requirement uh, demands. Right, like I said, like I explained in my previous episode. Right, the Shield platform encryption is totally governed by your business. Right, just because Salesforce has this technology doesn't mean that you have to use it. Right, at times, you know, you know, you can get by without using it, but if you're uh, company, right, uh, com has a compliance in place where they expect you to encrypt certain fields, then you need to go for this option, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so under setup, what you need to do, uh, just go for, you know, platform, yeah, encryption, and you see you got more options now. Just go to encryption policies, right, and see you can... Um, you know, encrypt all these fields if you wanted to do that. So you can encrypt the files attachment. You can read the help, you know, the tiny little, you know, help. Uh, encrypt files when they're uploaded to the Salesforce or attached to the records, right? It's pretty straightforward. Nothing fancy here. Uh, you can also encrypt the chatter, right? You can encrypt the feed, posts, questions, and answers, um, like name and, and all other comments, right? Also encrypt poll questions, you know. And... You can also encrypt your search indexes, which is pretty handy, right? Um, you can read about it more, right? And you can also encrypt, um, you know, CDC. That's the change data capture and the platform events, right? So these are a part of a second generation streaming API technology, right? If you do not know, um, you I will highly encourage you to go to the help documentation and read about it, right? Uh, I won't be covering any of this stuff in this episode, right? Because it's, it's beyond the scope of platform, uh, sorry, shield platform encryption. Okay, so what I'll do, I will go to encrypt fields. This is where, this is what I'm interested into. Uh, I'll just go to, okay, now, that takes time, okay. Um, so, you know, so Salesforce is pretty handy in this case, right? So before you encrypt, you need to um, understand the limitation, right? So this is very important. So before you do this, I would highly encourage you to click on this link and it will take you to a help documentation which explains to you about, you know, the Salesforce uh, best practices around Shield platform encryption, which I'm going to talk about uh, once I finish this, right? Okay, so you got an account object here, so let's go to edit. So, um, so the save enable, so let's say I wanted to um, uh, edit, say... Uh, mailing address, other address, you know, email, for instance, right? And so I'm going to say fax, phone, mobile. You know, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to do all of this stuff, okay? Um, so in in a in a normal scenario, you won't be encrypting this information because the, these feel, these are not very critical, right? Your contact might have, say, a credit card information, right? That could be considered as a critical part of a... Um, uh, encryption, encryption, so shield platform encryption. So now we have done that. Now it says enable men pending. So it will take some time, probably, you know, five minutes, less than five minutes. Once you, once the Salesforce uh, completes this process, you will get an email. Okay. So, um, you know, in the meantime, while it does whatever it's supposed to do behind the scene, let, let's talk about some of the uh, you know, the best practices around uh, Shield platform encryption, which is very important, right? So now before you, like I said, right, before you even 
you know, go ahead and you know, start implementing Shield platform encryption, you have to understand your company business model, right? The fields, what do you consider as a threat? Threat in the sense, right, you know, this, the information which you don't want others to see, okay? So like I gave you in a simple example, uh, credit card information, right? Credit card information, you obviously don't want people to see, right? Say, for instance, if I go to John record, I do not want to see the John credit card information, right? I do not want anyone else to see that, right? If, if, if someone goes to say, uh, you know, uh, you know, say Gaurav's record, right? I don't want someone else to see, you know, uh, probably he don't want uh, someone else to see, uh, the, you know, the credit card, uh, you know, information. Or if you go to say, you know, Lior record, right? You don't want someone else to see, say for instance, his address or, you know, other stuff, right? So that's totally governed by your business requirement and your business need and the compliance you have in place, okay? So, so that you should keep it in consideration. So that's why I say only encrypt which is necessary, right? And for that, uh, you once you decide, right, what all things you need to encrypt, which is great, say in this case, say address and credit card, right? Just for the sake of argument. Now you need to decide, uh, you know, design a uh, strategy for backing up and archiving key, right, and data, which is very important. So, because the thing is that, you know, for whatever reason, right, if your tenant secrets get, you know, destroyed or, you know, corrupted, then you need to re-import it back to access your data. Otherwise you can't access it, right? Um, and so that's why it's very important to have, you know, like I said, you know, I've demonstrated that you have an option to export it, so you need to keep it safe somewhere. If you lose it, then, you know, you might have to contact Salesforce. Um, so I'm not even sure if the Salesforce could help you with that because Salesforce cannot help you with, you know, delete a destroyed or misplaced tenant secret. That's the you know, reality. Um, you know, you have to accept it. So that's why I'm insisting that you need to have a strategy in place, right? Just don't go and, you know, blindly implement it, right? Because other companies are doing it, right? You need to have a strategy in place, right? That's why I say that if you work as an architect, you need to have a governance in place, right? To do all these kind of things. Okay, um, then, uh, you know, you need to understand, uh, you know, the other thing you need to work on, the strategy that, you can't implement directly on a production, right? You need to test that, you know, you need to do rigorous testing, right? Um, uh, on a sandbox environment to see the implication, right? Uh, another thing I just wanted to mention that, say um, you can't use encrypted field under uh, order by clause, okay? So for instance, say for instance, if you have a SQL query in place where you're saying select, uh, say an ID, name, um, say credit card number, which is, I say, for instance, is a custom field from contact uh, order by credit card number. If you ha if you do that, once you enable the Shield platform encryption on that credit card field, it will give you an access violation, okay? So let me show you an example in a second. So we got a fax, okay, mobile number. So what I'll do, I will go to the developer console and I'll show you what happens. You need to factor this, right? I mean, uh, this is very important. So, sorry, I just close that. And I'm just gonna just select ID from contact. Just, you know, say, let's say, um, what's the field name? I've forgotten. That. So these ones have enabled, as you can see. Only other streets are encrypted and only mailing street and mailing cities are encrypted right so they they tell you what all is encrypted right so you know that's all cool um so go to object manager here i don't know what's the name of the mobile phone field so uh, let me look at it i just go to contact um hmm. okay and just gonna go to contact I'm just gonna see mobile okay mobile phone okay um just go here and say, I'm just gonna do mobile, right? I'm just gonna do contact. So this is there. Now let me do order by, you know, order by, okay? Yeah, see, you can't do that. Cannot be sorted in a query call, okay? So um, 
now what I'll do I'll just go back um, so that's one of the just a second um, platform um, encryption so to, let me so as you can see just uh, just a second uh, it takes some time so you can't sort by any of these fields right order by in other words because it will give um, so you can't um, so that's one of the thing okay so let me see if I can edit and I change my mind for instance if I don't want it to it and I save it okay so Okay, let's say what happens. All right, so, all right. Okay, another thing I just wanted to uh, tell you that uh, Shield Platform Encryption is not a user authentication or authorization tool, right? Get that concept right, because people... I I spoken to Summer, right? And and the person said, Oh, it's an authorization tool. I like absolutely not. It is not. Because Shield Platform, even Salesforce, if you go to the Salesforce documentation, that clearly says it is not a user authentication or authorization tool, right? So now if you wanted to control, right, which user can see which data, you need to use the field level security, page layout setting, right? Out of box options functionality, right? Which is pretty obvious. Um so now one more thing you know i just wanted to mention that if you are dealing with currency and number you need to handle that with the key right um, because you know currency and number fields can't be encrypted uh, because the reason why they could have broad functional consequences across the platform you know such as you know disruption to the roll-up summary reports you know time uh, and other calculation right um, so that that's one of the thing you have to keep into consideration okay um, also you need to encrypt your data using the most current key right um, so whenever you generate any kind of tenant seeker right you know, then what happened is that you know obviously your uh, the new data is encrypted using this key uh, but Existing sensitive data remains encrypted using the previous key. This is one of the things you have to keep into consideration. Okay, um, so so what Salesforce advice, right? And um, what I've seen businesses doing, right? Uh, they normally uh, re-encrypt this field using the latest key. So that's one of the things you have to keep into consideration. Okay, um, so this is pretty much uh, you know in terms of the best practices. So um, let's look at um, um the see i'm just gonna close it okay let me copy this all right let's see if i can even do anything with this um oh no sorry not this one um you know that's why i always suggest before you start using any technology just read about the limitation and the recommendation which is very important right because you know someone would have used it and someone would have faced you know x number of issues and they would have recommended something even you know the vendors recommend you know you should use these things for you know xyz reasons only so it always helps to you know uh, go and read the recommendation first before you you know recommending someone else right Okay, see it works now because I've took off this mobile phone from an encrypted list, right? So you can't use, uh, you know, any field which is encrypted uh, under order by clause, right? So pay uh, special attention to this, right? You might have, say, a conga report, right, sitting with this order by statement, and you suddenly decide to encrypt the damn field, then it stopped working, right? So, you know, that's why I said it just have to, you know, be very careful when you do this kind of things, right? So that's pretty much I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, implementation, um, you know, how to encrypt it. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I learned something from it, right? So that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.